What's up everyone, D-Crack here. So hey, what's up guys? I'm actually going to be checking out a brand new channel that I've never done reactions to before. The channel is Your Maker. You are Maker. And I actually talked to this guy on Twitter and he gave me permission um, that I can react to his videos. It's all good. I actually messaged him on Twitter and he gave me the okay. Um, so we have a bunch of videos that I've never watched before. Um, Right here, it says real stories, real people, real disturbing, real life. It's always scarier if it's true. So what I did is I went over here and just clicked on oldest. So I figured I'd just go through here and react to videos that look interesting on the channel, especially with Halloween coming up. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm going to start with this one here. True scary stories number one. And as you can see... These videos here are from six years ago, so a ton of scary stories on here, kind of like a Mr. Nightmare type channel. You know, there's lots of different scary story channels on YouTube, but like always, I'll link the original video down below, and your maker was kind enough to give me the okay that it's cool to react to his video, so thank you if you see my reaction. Let's go ahead and start with this video here. I said, true scary stories number one. That's my very first true scary stories video. So, all right, here we go, guys. First time reacting to your maker, your maker's YouTube channel. Following are true. The following are true scary stories from the subreddit. Let's not meet. I'll have a Good link subreddit. in the description below. And no sleep on Reddit. Enjoy this video. <laughs> Please leave a like and subscribe for more. Let's begin. It was the summer before my senior year in college. My little brother, always interested in military stuff, had gotten a pair of night vision goggles for his birthday and he left them at my apartment. One night I was bored and decided to go try out the goggles at a wooded hiking area slash nature preserve nearby. In retrospect, this seems like a very stupid idea since I was all by myself and female. He's gonna see something walking out in the woods, not an animal, I bet, with the night vision goggles. It's gonna be something creepy walking out in the woods. <laughs> but I was young and stupid, oh, and I got myself all excited at the possibility of seeing deer and other woodland creatures in the natural nighttime habitat. I was familiar with these woods. My best friend and I had hiked there at night before, and we'd never run into anyone else. Our area is mostly rural and pretty safe, so I didn't anticipate any trouble. I parked in the little sparsely lit parking lot, ignored the sign, park closed at 10, and entered the woods, night vision goggles in hand. It was a half moon night that night, and that was the only light that filtered down through the canopy of the trees. It was pretty dark, and I didn't want to put on the goggles until I'd found a place to sit down. So I lit my way with the mini mag light on my keychain. A couple of times, I thought I heard a little rustling in the woods a fair distance away, but it was nothing out of the ordinary, and I put it on the animal activity. Hopefully the deer I'd come to see. Wait, animal activity or paranormal activity? <laughs> After I'd hiked a fair distance, I found a fallen log to sit on and put on the goggles. I don't know if you've ever used night vision goggles before, but the effect is impressive. They can turn near pitch darkness into bright as day. Everything appears in a shade of green, but wow. quite bright and clear. For a while I had a blast looking around for my fallen log vantage point. Some chipmunks played in the leaves nearby. A big owl blinked its lamp-like eyes at me from the tree branch. No deer, though. I started to think that maybe they wouldn't be likely to come anywhere near me, darkness or no, if I sat right in the open on a log. So I decided to find a place where I could be a little more hidden. I made my way a little deeper into the woods, and finally found a huge tree, perfect for climbing. I've always loved climbing trees, so it was nothing for me to hoist myself up a few branches and settle in and wait for my deer. I didn't get to see any. What I did see lit up in the bright night vision oh, God. green. Oh, God. What did he see? Above my 10 minutes of waiting, about my 10 minutes of waiting, was this. A man dressed head to toe in dark colored I clothing. I knew it. Making it was a freaking guy. The woods. He was coming from the same direction I'd come from and clearly trying to stay hidden. Moving from tree to tree, 
and glancing around carefully before moving again. I'm sorry, that's creepy. It looked very much as if he was looking for that's someone. That's freaking creepy. It took me a few moments to notice that he was carrying What the something. hell? And when I saw what that was, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. He had a knife. A big oh, one. Oh, God. And he was gripping it as if he expected to use it in the very near future. It wasn't deer hunting season, and this was a nature preserve, preserve where hunting of any kind is prohibited. And at any rate, this guy was alone and not dressed like a hunter. There were no deer in sight. Yeah, that's not suspicious at all. Just middle of the night, some guy in all black walking around in the woods with a knife, right? Nah, totally normal. Totally normal. <laughs> and very few hunters kill their prey with knives. Oh, jeez. I was suddenly horribly aware of my situation. A young woman, alone, weaponless, in the middle of the woods at night. This was the 90s, so no cell phones. And even if I'd had one, I wouldn't have felt safe using it. It, it less draw his attention. Yeah, because the... I didn't know how he was able to see the so phone well would darkness. light up. I guess his eyes had adjusted. And I was terrified he would look up and see me. I sat there, afraid to move, afraid to breathe, and watched him as he continued his methodical and stealthy process of scanning the forest for who or whatever the hell he was stalking. I scanned around but couldn't see anyone Who was he else, looking for? Even from my high vantage point. And the sickening thought struck me that he might be looking for me. I remembered the rustling noises I'd heard in the woods when I first arrived, and then I thought back farther and remembered something else. A white car that had fallen too close behind me for most of the drive to the nat nature preserve. I'd been annoyed a little and freaked Wait, was out at he, the time. Was he following her? The nature preserve parking area, the white car had passed me and driven on its way. What? I hadn't thought anything more of it. Now I wondered, horrified, if this was the driver of that car. If oh, he'd circled gosh. back and seen my parked car, alone in the lot. He probably did. come in after me. I sat, paralyzed with fear, and watched the man for what felt like forever, but was probably another half hour or so. There was a heart-stopping moment when he paused right under my tree, and I was sure he was going to look up and find me, but he no, didn't. No, no. After a while, he seemed to give up whatever he planned in mind. Whatever he plan he had in mind. I heard him say, fuck it. And he started heading back in the direction he'd come, the direction of the parking area. He was following her. Oh my gosh. He I had to have been tree, following her. Wet with sweat and crying until the sun came up a few hours later. Then I climbed down and still terrified gripped the little can of pepper spray on my keychain. I made my way as fast as I could to the parking lot. Pepper spray? The mad head. Better mad than nothing. <laughs> my windshield had been smashed with a rock. What? And someone had scraped all down the sides of my car with something sharp. Probably the knife. A giant knife. Yeah, yeah. That I'm lucky uh. and it didn't end up in my chest. Thank God for the night vision goggles God, that let me damn. see him before he, he no. could see me. And thank God for the big trees with sturdy branches. Creepy forest rapist. Let's never meet again. I live alone oh, that's out creepy. the country with my two Caucasian shepherds, Dangzig and Ripley. Caucasian shepherds are notoriously known as the best guard dog breeds in the world, and when you live out in the country where the nearest neighbor is miles away, they're your best security system. One evening, it was around 11, and Danzig and Ripley were monitoring the house. I was watching an older slasher flick that was on some channel I'd never heard of. I began to feel pretty tired and decided to go to bed. Suddenly, I woke up to the sound of Danzig and Ripley barking uncontrollably. I looked at the clock at my, on my nightstand. 3.34 in the morning. I walked into the living room where Danzig and Ripley were, still barking. They were facing the front door, and I decided to open it. Most of the time, when they had woken me with their howls, it was because there was some sort of animal outside. Outside, I saw nothing, just an empty field of grass. I sighed in an annoying manner and marched back to the warm comforts of my bed. Danzig and Ripley were now just quietly growling. Whatever animal was out there, it wasn't there anymore. This is some intense music. The next morning, I got up and put <laughs> Danzig and Ripley on a leash. We walked through the grass field. And the music is a little too loud, but I'll give your maker, you know, a break because this was his first video ever. So I assume his newer videos, the, the audio levels are probably a little better. <laughs> the woods. In the woods, there was a large path next to a small creek. As I was walking, I saw a figure hidden amongst the trees. It had a human shape. I wondered if it was just a lost person who was searching for help. Hello? I called out. The figure didn't move. Are you lost? 
The thing began to move through the trees until it was about a couple feet away. I saw a heavily bearded man. He was wearing a baggy hoodie that had many holes. The hoodie concealed his eyes. I said once again in a more quiet way, Are you lost? The man spoke, I'm fine. His voice raspy. Okay then, buddy, calm down. Teeth left. Those that still remained were yellow and cavity filled. He kept standing there a couple of feet away. I knew he wouldn't come close. Not when I had two large growling dogs on my side. The man was creepy, but I wasn't intimidated or anxious. I said bye and continued my walk. By the time I returned to the spot where I spoke to the man, he was nowhere in sight. I didn't think much of it and returned home. That's a creepy house, jeez. I stayed there until killing floor on my PC. Eventually, I grew tired and went to bed. Again, I woke up to the sounds of my bo- dogs barking at the door. I walked into the living room and opened the door. As soon as I opened it, I saw a piece of paper on the ground. It was folded a in half, and I could faintly what? see text through it. What? I picked it up and opened it. It was written in red ink and read, I like your house. I immediately thought, Oh, what the hell fuck? no. I closed the door. No. I didn't sleep that night. The next morning, I took Danzig and Ripley on their usual walk. Didn't spot the hooded creep and thought nothing of it. Oh, God, no. When I returned no. to my house, a window had been broken. I rushed into my house with my dogs who were starting Gosh. to go crazy. They started barking at the closet in the hall where I kept my supplies. I opened it and there stood the... And I saw the hooded man hunched over holding a kitchen knife. Before he could even move, oh, my no. dogs pounced on him. No. He dropped the knife and was laying on the floor where my dogs were holding him down. I contacted the Thank authorities God for and the, the man dogs. was arrested. It turns Jeez. out the man was an ex-convict that had been in jail for heroin possession. He was sent a to druggie. prison, but I still haven't completely gotten over it. Every time my dogs bark and growl, my heart drops. So creepy ex-con who hid in my closet. I hope we never meet again. Thank God in the for south the dogs. Of the US. And what I mean by south, I mean redneck territory. Redneck. If you ever Woo! heard of the food liver mush, <laughs> then you'll get a specific picture of the area I live in. If you've liver never heard of mush. it, then don't worry. The food is mainly in the south, kind of like grits. My okay. mom works in a doctor's office, dealing with medical records in another county. Sometimes I go to her office and sit with her if I have a doctor's appointment, or to go to work with her when I'm wanting to meet up with friends who live in that county, or hang out at their place. Around four years ago, my friend Betsy, who lives in the county my mom works in, asked me to hang out. I rode with my mom to work to wait on my friend and sit with my mom until then. I decided to go outside for some fresh air and walk around a little when a red truck pulls up and stops in front of me. I thought maybe he wanted directions, as people often do in this county, so I walked up a little bit, not too close, to the passenger window and asked him what he needed. As I'm walking up to the passenger window, I take in the physical characteristics of the man in the driver's seat. He looks to be in his 50s, short white hair, scruffy beard, and a beer belly. He beer looks belly. Enough, to, <laughs> enough for men around his age in the area, so I didn't really think much of it. Before I can ask what he needs, he asks me if I need a ride. After telling him no, that I'm waiting on a friend to come pick me up, he proceeds to tell me that he can take me somewhere if I need it. Oh, no. Hell no. Look at my phone as if I just got a text message, and I tell him that my friend will be there here in a few minutes. About five minutes later, as I'm trying to calm myself down, Not a good idea. He then tells me that he has a job for me, and it pays a lot of money. He said that I I look old enough for the job, and I can use the money to buy me a lot of clothes and makeup on other teenager girls. I tell him what no a, thanks. What a creep. Practically Straight up the creeper. Building. I look out the window and the red truck is still there. I run to the back of the office and tell my mom everything that happened. She follows me to the window so I can show her the truck, but it's already sped off. By this the time, her co workers are calling the police and asking of course for he the details left. of the truck. The man of course, he left. He got caught trying to freaking kidnap a teenage girl. And is driving. Jeez. As I'm giving the details, I see my friend pull up in the parking lot. I got out and meet her and tell her what happened. As we're leaving, I spot the red truck. I tell her that's the truck, no, and she speeds up to no. pass. The next day, I heard the police caught the guy. It turns out he was wanted as a sex offender and had many counts of molesting and raping young women, including oh his nieces. Oh my god! I'm thankful that I was smart enough to including not his get in the nieces. truck with him, because who knows what would have happened to that's me. That's terrible. This story is Freaking actually a personal pervert. one of mine from when I was a child. Uh, I was at my grandma's in Northern California. I was visiting over there and my mom had just shown up and she brought her dog with us. 
and it ended up getting out of my grandma's house. So I ran up the road, and there was a hill with a church up at the end of the up at the end of the hill. Actual we used to church. play there all the time as kids. I'd go skateboard there. I'd go hunting behind it, so I was really familiar with it. So I ran up there, and I was alone. I was a very fast runner as a kid, and I go up there alone, calling for the dog. And I don't know, probably three minutes after I get up there, some dude walks out of the house. I can't say specifically what house to this day, but it was one of the houses on the side. And came up and asked what I was doing. Told him I was looking for my dog. And he gave me, hey, your dog's in here type of thing and started taking a lunge towards me. N- nothing, you know, crazy lunge, enough to make me to get s- step back. And then I s- turn around and went to sprint off and he starts sprinting after me. What? Thank God I was a fast runner because I made it all the what? way back down to my grandma's house, which it, which is probably a quarter mile away. And I didn't see the guy the whole way. I didn't turn around to look the entire time I ran either. And I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I maybe maybe it's all these scary stories I've been reading and listening to. Who the to, hell was that guy chasing you? I still don't you? even know if I ever told my mom. And I just hope that some other kid maybe didn't get caught by him. Because obviously he really wanted something to happen. Jeez. What it is, I still don't know. And that probably makes it the freakiest part. But I'm glad I don't know. But I wanted to share that with you guys. Wow. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Please with a church. Well, all right, guys. Like I said, this was the channel Your Maker. I'll leave a like on this um, video. Uh, this is the first time that I've done a reaction to this channel, Your Maker. True scary stories number one. Guys, let me know down below in the comments of my reaction here. If you if you enjoy these videos, if you enjoy this channel, Your Maker. I'll definitely do some more scary reactions in the future. Like I said, just leave a comment down below. Make sure and smash the like button, subscribe to my channel if you're new. Uh, but thanks for watching, guys. And again, shout out to the channel, Your Maker. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.